Bye. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to our world and speaking directly to humankind. You were given authority in heaven and on earth. You delegated that authority to us who believed in you. You told us you would never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Jesus, for your promises to us. We make this prayer in Jesus' name, in union with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Mariola. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, my brothers and sisters, once again, a warm welcome to each one of you as we continue our retreat, I would say, on the topic of eternal life. And, you know, yesterday we started studying from uh, John chapter 10, verse 27. Did we have that scripture up on John chapter 10, verse 27? Mm -hmm. Part 27. So in John chapter 10, verse 27, yeah. I need to make you... Go host, praise God. Yes, Sister Mariola, what did you say? Today's part 27. What is eternal life? Praise God, sister. Praise God. Praise God. So we were studying on John chapter 10, verse 27. We'll have that scripture up on the screen. And I believe we learned just a part of that scripture where Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. You know, you know, my brothers and sisters, I want you to focus on every word of the scripture because this is another scripture in John chapter 10, verse 27 in the Bible, especially when we talk about eternal life, where this scripture is like the heart of eternal life. I want you to look very carefully at verse number 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice. And yesterday, we also dwelt on this particular part of it where the sheep hear his voice. Only those who are sheep are going to be attentive to the voice of their shepherd. There are many sheep in the sheepfold. There are many shepherds who put their sheep in the sheepfold. Each sheepfold has got many sheep of different clutters of sheep. And all these shepherds, you know, by the, by the, if you really study about shepherds, they put those sheep in the sheepfold by night and they are actually waiting for daybreak so that they can call those sheep out and take them to the pasture in order to graze. So only those sheep who recognize the voice of their master, of their shepherd, they only will come out. The rest of the sheep will remain waiting for their respective shepherds. So if a sheep only hears the voice of their shepherd, then Jesus is saying he is the good shepherd and those who hear his voice only are the sheep. So that means if we are hearing his voice, we are indeed sheep of the good shepherd. Now look up further and see what he says further. And I know them and they follow me. You know, you know, my brothers and sisters, if you really go to the Bible, you go to Psalm 139, especially one Psalm 139. I mean, there are so many other scriptures, but if you go to Psalm 139, you will see how the Lord created us, even when we were being formed in our mother's womb. If you go to Ephesians chapter uh, 1, verses 3 and 4, especially verse number 4, he says, we have been chosen in Christ Jesus even before the foundations of the earth. That means only when we accepted Jesus Christ, we would now be known by the Father. His eyes would be on you. You would be his beloved. That means in order to be really the beloved of the Lord, in order for the Father to know us, in order for God to know you and me, I must accept Jesus as my Lord, God, and Savior. And Jesus is saying, because my sheep hear my voice, I know them personally and they follow me. Such beautiful words, my brother. You know, just think about it. You know, if somebody has, you know, a, you know, has got a friend who's having a very high position in a company or probably is a minister or is a head of state 
or is you know is holding a very very high position where you know it's very difficult for people to get access to him and if you really know this person you will never ever have a problem to get access to that person it will be more easier for you to get access to that person because of your friendship because you know them and here the lord is saying because you have accepted the blood of my son you have been washed in the blood of my son i now know you and therefore you can have access to me remember the song that we just heard a short while ago only by grace can we enter only by grace can we stand not by our human endeavor but by the blood of the lamb and you know my brothers and sisters because we believe in jesus because we have been washed in his blood now jesus knows me the heavenly father accepts me in the beloved and because i know this jesus and i hear his voice i now follow him i now follow him you know if you really look at this verse 27 my brothers and sisters you will see that jesus made the same point earlier in john chapter 10 verses 3 to 5 can we go back please john chapter 10 verses 3 to 5 i think 2 to 5 or 3 to 5 when we began this parable when we began john chapter 10 you know we were talking about the shepherd i want you to look from verse 3 to 5 can we read verses 3 to 5 please to him the porter opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out and when he puts <coughs> forth his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice for they know his voice praise god what is verse number 5 and a stranger will they not follow but they flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers for they know not the voice of strangers stranger would you my brother sister to listen to this very carefully jesus is saying my sheep hear my voice my sheep hear my voice that means if the sheep hear the voice of the good shepherd there are also other voices there are other voices there are the voices of the stranger there are the voices of the world there are the voices that are you know distracting us but when we recognize the good shepherd's voice we will only follow the voice of the good shepherd You know my brothers and sisters I want to say this with sadness I want to say this with you know with as as a bit of a warning what the holy spirit is giving us in the body of Christ today in the body of Christ today in what we call as the church there are too many voices right now of the stranger there are too many voices of the stranger In fact we have changed the word of god and we are trying to you know manipulate things in order to accommodate people so that they will be comfortable you cannot compromise on the word you cannot change the word you cannot alter the word in order to comply to make people comfortable we need to comply the word of god the word of god cannot be changed to make us happy we need to change in order to comply to that unchanging word of god and only those who are sheep only those who are sheep they will hear the voice of that shepherd who does not change his word because he spoke his word at creation he spoke his word 2000 years ago and he's speaking the same word today without changing his his word is the same yesterday today and forever jesus is the same yesterday today and forever so brothers and sisters Jesus or the or the heavenly father did not speak one language you know probably 10000 years ago he never spoke a language when his son came to, uh, you know 2000 years ago and he's not speaking a different language now the people have changed the world has changed man has changed but god's word has not changed and today when man is trying to change the word of god to suit man it cannot be the word of god it is the voice of the stranger and i hope you really understand this as we go further as the time goes by 
you will begin to realize the words of Jesus, or you'll begin to realize the words that St. John spoke. And I briefly spoke about it yesterday in 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1. I said, you know, during the end time, St. Jo uh, John, you know, that Apostle John, he warned that there will be a lot of false prophets who will be going out, completely changing the interpretation of the word of God, completely giving a different word of, to the word of God, only to make people comfortable, only to suit people so that they will come to the church and begin to hear music in their ears. But you know, my brothers and sisters, unless we begin to hear the truth and begin to change our thinking based on the truth of God's word, we can never ever be able to hear the voice of the good shepherd. And therefore, when you begin to hear his voice, only those who are sheep, they will follow the good shepherd. Look at this verse again now. But he... But he that, end, okay, verse number 27, let's go back to verse number 27. John chapter 10, verse number 27. Look at what he says. My sheep hear my voice and I know them that Jesus is saying and they follow me. Now the question is, whom are you and I following? Are we following some film stars? Are we following some human beings with titles and positions? Are we following some, you know, very, very famous preachers and, you know, very many great men who are well known in the world? Or are we really following that voice, that voice, that unchanging voice of the good shepherd? And his name is Jesus. And he speaks to you and me today through his Holy Spirit. You know, my brothers and sisters, when we, when, you know, I, 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 may not have, I may have said this before, but you know, if you've got a mobile phone or you've got a television set, you know, this mobile phone and the television set will never work or will never be able to give a signal. You're never able to receive a call until the, the, the satellite link or that, or that signal can be caught by your mobile phone. And if your mobile phone is in a place like in a lift or probably, you know, in, a, in an area where there is no signal, you will find that phone is just a piece of, uh, you know, an instrument. It's, it's a useless instrument until you get connected by that signal. In the same way, when you and I are not connected to the good shepherd, we are simply a junk that is getting wasted away. Think about it. You know, if you've got a big television house, you've got a probably a, a 50 inch television or 100 inch television, but there is no satellite link. There is no picture coming on that screen. What is the use of that television? If you've got a radio and you're not able to have a signal, you're not able to have that frequency, you're not able to tune it, it doesn't give you any, it doesn't serve you the purpose of as a radio. What is the use of that radio? What is the use of your mobile? What is the use of any equipment that is not able to receive the signal? It's just an instrument just lying and picking up dust in your house. In the same way, in the kingdom of God, when a person is not tuned to the good shepherd, they are not listening to his voice. You are a piece of junk in the kingdom who will be trampled over. You are just someone who's not even going to be, you know, you just thrown away, wasted, because you are hearing the voice of the world. You are hearing the voice of the stranger. You are living your life on your own terms. You know, my brothers and sisters, I hope you are really getting this. We, we always look at our mobile phone, we look at our television, we look at our equipment and we begin to say, oh, this equipment is very good because I can get a signal, I can use the mobile. In the same way, when you and I are tuned to the voice of the good shepherd, now the good shepherd can make you and me usable in his kingdom. And now with that relationship that we are having with the good shepherd, you and I, will go out and start bearing the fruit of the kingdom, start bringing others into the kingdom, start making that voice of the good shepherd known to people who have never heard his voice. Remember, I told you a couple of days back, Jesus is not going to come to the earth to preach the gospel. He is not going to come and, you know, go to the streets and have some, you know, seminar or have a retreat or have some gospel seminar. He is going to use people who are tuned to his voice to go out and preach the truth of the gospel so that those people who never heard the voice of the good shepherd shall hear the voice of the good shepherd because you and I stepped out to give the good news to them. 
I hope you really understand. Now that we experience eternal life, now that we are tuned to the Good Shepherd, we also have a responsibility. We are accountable to the Lord. And you know, my brothers and sisters, those of us who are just sitting down and just whiling away our time, just occupying space, you will be trampled underfoot. Remember what Jesus said in that parable. There was a parable in which a, a, a owner of a garden, he came to that particular garden and started looking for figs. And he says to the gardener, he says, for three years, I've been coming to this garden in order to bear, uh, to, to eat figs on that, but I have not found any figs. Cut the tree down. So the gardener says to the, to the owner, he says, master, let me put some fertilizer around it. Let me dig around it. Let me remove all the parasites from it. Let me look after this tree and let us wait for another one year before it can bear fruit. Next year, if it doesn't bear fruit, owner, my boss, you can cut the tree down. What was this parable signifying? It was signifying you and me that gardener was Jesus. The tree was going to be cut down by the heavenly father. But Jesus said, hold on. I'm going to earth. I'm going to sweat my blood. I'm going to shed my blood for them. I'm going to invest in them. I'm going to give them my word. I'm going to give them your love. And if they reject it, then father, you cut them off for all eternity so that they will never be able to see your face. And therefore, brothers and sisters, now that we are able to hear the gospel, now that the word of God is being preached, what are you and I doing about it? Are we just listening it to it, just hearing the word? Are we really absorbing it? Are we assimilating it? Are we putting it into practice? And are we going out and sharing it to somebody? Or are we just occupying space? Are we just wasting our time? The parable will surely come to pass. Remember, God has invested to the blood of his son in you and me. He shed his blood, not just for the whole world. Even if you were the only person, he would have come and shed his blood for you. And the fact that he shed his blood, that's the truth that he shed his blood. He expects you to respond to the love that he poured into you and me by going out and being the ambassadors of his kingdom, first and foremost, to experience his love, to experience that intimacy, to experience that relationship with him. And now the fruit of that relationship to go and follow him and to bring those who are on the outside into the kingdom of God. If this cannot stir you up, this message of the Lord cannot stir you up. Even if the Lord comes again, you will simply not stir, be stirred up because this is the Lord speaking to each one of us saying, I have shed my blood for you. I have invested in you. I spent my, I gave my blood with the last drop of my blood for you. What are you doing for the love I've given you? What are you doing for the sacrifice that I made? I almighty God became like you one man and came on this earth and died for you. What are you doing for this grace that I've given you? And you know, my brothers and sisters, if you and I can respond to this grace, you and I can look at this thing seriously and start bearing the fruit of the kingdom. We are only acknowledging to Jesus that sacrifice that he did on the cross was not in vain, was not for nothing. It was because of his love for you and me. And if you have received this love, my brothers and sisters, if I have received this love, it is natural for you and me to go out and share this love. Remember, when you preach the gospel, you are preaching the love of God. Remember, the gospel is not something that you are preaching bad news. The gospel is good news. It is actually too good to be true news. When you go out, because you have received the gospel, you are being transformed by the gospel. You are going out and sharing that gospel. You are actually bringing those sheep out there, which we started earlier, into the sheepfold, where they also will be under that one shepherd, Jesus Christ. You know, my brothers and sisters, I want to go a little bit further on this verse and I want to show you what he says when, I, when he said, I know them. I know them. You know, this Greek word to know, it's, it, it means ginoska, G-I-N-O-S-K-A. That is the Greek word to say no. The word no is ginoska. And you know what it means? It means to, uh, to understand completely. 
to understand completely, to understand deeply, to understand intimately. You know, most of the time, you know, my brothers and sisters, we are simply superficially knowing the word of God. We superficially, yes, we got head knowledge by the wounds of Jesus and healed. But have, when have you really experienced sickness in your body and have you taken the word of God and really seen the power of that word in your life? If you really know that word has really set you free, you know and you know that by the stripes and wounds of Jesus, you have been healed. Otherwise, it's just head knowledge by the wounds of Jesus. I can rattle the scripture out of my brain, but I will never know the word until I waited on that word. I patiently, you know, endured that word till the end, till I saw the end result. You know, my brothers and sisters, people are not interested in operating by faith. If they want some job or they want something, they will call people. They will call this one. They will call that one. But they will never hear the voice of the good shepherd. They will never wait on the Lord. They will not take the scripture and hold on to the promise. And when they don't hold on to the promise, now they are trusting men. Now they are frustrated. Now they are absolutely impatient. Now they have gone into, you know, into depression. And now they are just going through life, just going through the motions of life because they don't really have that relationship and intimacy with the Lord. They're just, they're just, just assuming that they are saved. But in actual practice, they have no relationship with the Lord because they are not spending time with the Lord. But as you begin to know, as you begin to know deeply, as you begin to understand completely, you are investing time, you're putting aside other activities, you're putting yourself aside all the priorities of life to reprioritize your life to know the Lord. You know, my brothers and sisters, this relationship is getting so intimate. It's getting so, you know, getting so deeper that this God is simply directing your life. It's something like this. You know, if a person says, you know, I want to go from here to London, the person says, I'm going to fly. The person says, I'm going to fly. Do you think they put wings for them and that person flies? They don't put the wings on them and fly. The person gets into an aeroplane and that aeroplane flies and that aeroplane takes that person to London. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, when you get into a relationship with Jesus, when you get into an intimacy with Jesus, now Jesus is the pilot of your life. You have got onto the aeroplane with Jesus and he's taking you on a beautiful journey. Just get off that plane and think if you can fly. You will drop like a hot potato. You'll just drop like a stone from heaven or from the sky. In the same way, when you get off that plane where Jesus is not the pilot, you are simply groping through life. You're just going about life. Every day just comes and every day just goes. No fruit, no progress, no relationship. You're just walking through life absolutely lost without any purpose, without any meaning, without any direction. But the moment you begin to hear the voice of the good shepherd, the moment you invest time in studying his word, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, everything in our life changes. There is a meaning to our life. There is significance to what we do. Every moment comes, even when we wake up in the morning, we are not waking up. We look at the sun and we say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the sun. When we go back to, you know, when it's end of the day and you see the moon, thank you for that moon. Thank you for the trees. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the food. You are so grateful. You know, a grateful heart is simply acknowledging this God and telling this God how thankful we are for the, for the opportunity of life. We could have been made into an animal. We could have been a camel or could have been a tiger. We just lived a few years and we would have been dead and gone. But he has made us to live with him for all eternity. He has given us a spirit like him. He has invested in us. He has saved us. And now his blood has washed us clean in order to start bearing the fruit. What are we doing about it, my brothers and sisters? If we are not going, if this is not going to light up our fire, Nothing else will light up our fire. We'll simply begin to hear the word of God one year and it will go out. But we will never step out and start producing the fruit. And that is why, that is why this God today is talking to each one of us and he's saying, if I know you and you're hearing my voice, then surely there is a reason why I have invested in you, why I need you in order to start bringing those other sheep in the sheepfold because you have been chosen to go out and reach that soul, to that particular soul, to that particular soul, which only you can reach and nobody else can reach. You know, this word ginoska, it simply, as I told you earlier, it means 
to understand completely. You know, this word to know, it does, it's not the same as that other word in Greek called oida, O-I-A-D-A. -A. That's what I remember when I was studying, oida, which means, you know, to have knowledge of, of something, to have head knowledge. For example, you know, if I, if, I, if I say I go to the market and I say, you know, I'm going to buy a particular fruit. Somebody says, I, I know that fruit. I have an idea what it looks like. I've got head knowledge of it. But a person who, who knows Ginoska, who's not Oida, who just has head knowledge, the person who's Ginoska, who understands it completely, he'll say, this fruit is like this. You need to cut it in this particular way. You need to wait for it to ripen. When you eat it, it'll be sweetish, it'll be sourish. You need to, you know, wait for it to become this particular way, this color, it needs to be seasoned because this person has got a deep internal knowledge of the word. So when he says a mango, he's not just going to say a mango, he give a name to the mango. He said, this mango has got this particular taste. This mango needs to ripen in this particular way. This mango can be eaten half ripe. This mango needs to be really ripe because the person has done a deep understanding. He has gone and understood it with, you know, completely the whole thing. In such a situation, when we come to the word of God, we don't just read the word or we don't just have a head knowledge, but we go deep into that word. You know, I, I don't know whether you all have ever heard me say that, you know, when you go to have sugarcane juice on the roadside, I don't know how many of you have even drunk sugarcane juice here in India. If you just go outside, this is a season where you get sugarcane juice. And you know, when, they, when you want sugarcane juice by the roadside, you have these big sticks of sugarcane juice. And they have about three, four, you know, pieces of sugar cane juice. And you say to them, those guys, they put it into a machine. And as soon as they put those three, four sticks on the other side, you get the juice coming out. Now you think, you know, he's already knocked up the juice and I can take my cup and go. But then what he does is he takes it on, on the other side, he folds it and he puts it again. When he puts it again, again, the juice comes. Now you think it's over, it's ready to throw those pieces out because already the juice has been taken. But you'll be surprised, my brothers and sisters, for the third time, he will again fold it and he will put it again and again the juice will come. You think by now it's already over. And finally, my brothers and sisters, for the fourth time, he will again make it into some other bundle and he will push it through that, through that, uh, to those threads or to that, you know, that squeezer and he will get the last juice out of it. And as he was doing that, the Lord was talking to me and saying, that is exactly how I want people to know my word. I don't want you to know my word just by reading it. I want you to meditate on it. I want you to reflect on it. I want you to squeeze the juice out of that word. I want you to get all the revelation of that word. I want you to get all the secrets of that word. But you will get all those secrets when you dwell on that word, when you spend your time on that word. You are not going to focus on other things. You're not going to do it just because you want to do it but you are spending time because you have reprioritized your life in order to study that word. And now the Lord is giving you all the secrets. He's giving you all the revelations. He's telling you everything about that one word. And as you begin to get that secrets and revelation, you're growing, you're growing, your intimacy is growing. And you are now becoming that son, that daughter in a, such an intimate way because now you are understanding the word more in detail. You are doing ginoska on the word of God. You're not doing oida, just a head knowledge by the wounds of Jesus. But you know and you know that this word really works. You know, my sisters and brothers, I hope you are really understanding this. Even when the Lord is speaking to us, he can speak to everybody who's ready to be sensitive to his voice. We only want to hear his voice and he's talking to us all the time. But are you really listening? Are you really spending time? Are you like that sugar cane juice squeezing out everything that the Lord wants to speak to you? And he wants to do that. Are you really listening? And you know, my brothers and sisters, when you talk about the word ginoska, you know, ginoska was, was the word that, as I said to you, to understand completely was used, I believe, in, uh, it was used in, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. Can we go there, please? Matthew chapter 1, verse 25, again in Luke chapter 1, uh, somewhere in 33 or 34. But let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse number 25. I want to show you what this word ginoska really means. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. What is, and he called his name Jesus. 
What is this verse number 25 saying? And he knew her not till she had bought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Who is he talking about? He knew her not and knew her not. This is talking about Joseph. Joseph and Mary did not have any sexual relationship. They did not have a relationship which is only possible between a husband and wife until Jesus was born. Remember this. And knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son. That means after Jesus was born, then only Joseph had intimate sexual relationship with Mary. But until jo Jesus was born, Joseph did not have an intimate relationship Ginoska with Mary. So what is the meaning of Ginoska? What is the meaning of knowing? It is this intimate sexual relationship that is possible between a husband and wife, that is possible when two become one flesh, that is only possible through a Christian marriage. When we understand a Christian marriage, that's exactly, I'm not going to talk about marriage today, I'm not going to talk about this oneness today, but what I wanted to say was, Joseph knew her not, never knew Mary until Jesus was born. So the Ginoska was, he knew her now completely. He knew her. She was now, you know, completely in his arms. She was completely exposed to Joseph only after she had delivered Jesus. So remember, my brothers, this knowing is not just, you know, intellectual knowledge, but it is a personal intimate understanding. Let me say this again. You know, when you talk about the word ginoska, it is, as I said to you, ginoska simply means, you know, understanding completely. And therefore, when you are beginning to understand eternal life, when you're beginning to live eternal life, it's not just having a head knowledge, not just having an intellectual knowledge, just listening to the preacher. There are a lot of preachers today. Whole day and night they are preaching. You can go to the YouTube and listen to any preacher. But remember, just because you heard the preacher, you're not going to live Ginoska. You're not going to understand completely because the Lord personally wants to tell you so many things. What the preacher told you, he told you what the Holy Spirit told him. Maybe you got a head start by listening to the preacher. But what about the time that you and I need to spend personally with the Lord? He wants to give us revelation for ourselves. There are some revelation that he gives to us as a church. There is some revelation that he gives us as a community. There are some revelation that he gives us as a group. There is some revelation that he gives us a family. But only when I sit with him one to one and with that sugarcane juice, which is being squeezed three, four times, I'm spending that time one to one with the Lord. He's going to give me revelations on a personal level because he has a plan and purpose for my life. There is a reason why I'm on this earth. I'm here to fulfill his purpose. And only when I begin to know what his purpose is by spending that time, now by doing Ginoska, by knowing completely the word, he's going to give me that revelation so that I can fulfill the purpose for which he put me on this earth. Let me just divert from here. The Holy Spirit wants me to divert from here. I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. Remember, we are talking about Ginoska. We are talking about relationship. We are talking about eternal life, but look at this verse. It's an Old Testament scripture, but it has got so much of relevance when you look at it with respect to eternal life. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. It's talking about the plan that the Lord has for each one of us. Let's read that. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. For I know, look at what the Lord is saying. This is the Lord speaking through Jeremiah and he's saying, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. That means if the Lord has created you and me, he has created us with a purpose. There is a good purpose. The Lord does not create any junk. He's not created you and me just to come for time pass here. We are not here on this, on this journey of this earth just to come here on this earth, grow up, 
eat food, go to work, come back, wait for the weekend to come, go to sleep again, get up on the next weekend, go to work, then we retire, then we sit in front of a television and we while away our time and then finally we die and people will say, coming home, coming home. That's not what our life is. Our life is a life of purpose. Our life is a life in Christ Jesus, which is supposed to bear fruit. So if the Lord knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give us an expected end, I must spend time with the Lord, with, through his word, in order to know the thoughts that he has for me, the plans that he has for me, so that I can fulfill the purpose that he has for my life. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we come to the preacher, we go to church, as a group we hear it, but only when we sit one-to-one. -one. Only when we are dwelling with the word one-to-one. -one. It's good to go to preachers. It's good to hear the word. It's good to go for a dozen retreats. It is all good. But let me tell you, it is no compromise for sitting one-to-one -one with the Lord, becoming sitting at the feet of Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you and me and showing us what purpose he has for my life so that I can fulfill my God-given purpose. By listening to the preacher, you may be influenced in order to know what the preacher is doing about, what we have to do as a community. But when you sit one-to-one, -one, that's the time the Lord is going to reveal to you. And remember, God called Moses when he was 80. If you told somebody at today at 80, you have to lead a million Jews to the promised land, they will laugh at you and they'll say, Are Baba, by 60, we have retired already. It's time for us to go to bed. It's time for us to watch television. It's time for us to play golf. It's time for us to watch the movies. God calls Moses when he's 80. That means there is no retirement. There is no vacation in God's kingdom. Every single day is a day to bear fruit. So if God could call Moses, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter how much time you have wasted so far. The day you begin to spend that one-to-one -one time with the Lord is the time and you spend. And as I told you, keep the sugarcane juice in your mind. As you begin to spend time, dwell on the word, get the revelation. He's going to reveal his purpose to you so that you can fulfill the purpose which he has put you on this earth. You know, many of us, my brothers and sisters, including myself, for 40, 45 years of my life, I did not know what my purpose is. I thought, you know, by studying my engineering degree, working in the company, going to do a job, getting salary at the end of the month was that was my purpose. So one fine day by 60, I would retire. I would have a bank balance and I would live a nice life for all the years that I worked until the Lord said one day, you know, that's not your purpose for which I called you. Yes, what you have done for all these years is not going to go in waste. It's not going to go in vain because all that experience is going to help you. All that you learned during that time is going to help you. But now that you're going to spend time with me, now that I'm going to teach you, now that I've brought you to ground zero, now that you're usable in the kingdom, now as you spend time with me, I'm going to reveal the purpose for you. I'm going to show you what my purpose is for your life. And I'm going to show you how you will be usable in my kingdom so that you can fulfill the very purpose for which I put you on this earth. You know, my brothers and sisters, I don't know whether you are really getting stirred up right now. You know, if you're only thinking you'll go to Bible class, you'll go to church, you'll hear the word of God, you'll be inspired by the word of God. If that is all that you're thinking, praise God for that. But you need to go to step two because you start need to start bearing fruit. There is a purpose for your life. There is a reason why God is investing in you. There is a purpose by which he's showing you his love and his revelations. It's only so that you will bring those sheep so that they all will be under one shepherd. In fact, you and I can expedite the return of the Lord. We can expedite Jesus' coming so that everybody begins to know the Lord. You know, the more the people know the Lord, that will be the time I believe the Lord will return. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to have a fair chance. He's been patient with us so that everybody has an opportunity to hear the gospel, to hear the good news. And he's expecting you and me to be that person who will go out and start bearing good news. You know, my brothers and sisters, there's so much that the Holy Spirit wants to teach us. But I want to tell you one thing. This word, ginoska, is not just about, you know, having intellectual knowledge. It's having, you know, a knowledge which is personal, which is very deep, which is very intimate. It's having this understanding by spending time with the Lord. 
And if you can spend time with the Lord in a much deeper way, you know, you know, focus, you know, reprioritize your time. There are times you have to say, nobody can come in my life, not my spouse, no my children, no my friend, no my TV serial. This is the time I'm dedicating to spend time with the Lord. And you make this your commitment. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, this God is going to open up the windows for you. He's going to give you his revelations. He's going to give you his secrets. Why should he give you his secrets? Why should he tell you if you are not faithful to, to listen to his voice? Why should he give you the position, the, you know, the step of, you know, step number 10, if you're not faithful with step number one? You know, before we end, I want to show you another scripture. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me take you to Psalm 119, verse number 105. Psalm 119, verse number 105. Let's listen to this. Let's look, see what this psalm is saying. Remember, this is all talking about intimacy. This is all talking about relationship. And only when you are spending time with his word, then only he's going to show you his purpose. He's going to show you his very, very, very plan for your life. Let's read that. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now I want you to look at this verse again. You know, my brothers and sisters, the word of God is not a floodlight. It's not a searchlight. It's not going to show you the, the distance probably, you know, say 10 miles away or 20 miles away. It is a lamp unto your feet. And if you got, you know, just try it out. Try to have some shoes which have got light just, you know, at the edges of your, of your shoe. Where will the light be there? It will be just about probably a foot or probably a foot and a half around your, around your foot. That light will be just around your foot. So the word of God is the lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It means every time you take a step, the light is just around your feet so that you know where you are so that you don't go into any other place. Now, as you faithfully begin to take every step of the way, faithfully doing that, you know, by the time you have taken 50 steps or 100 steps and look back, you'll be very pleasantly surprised where the Lord has brought you. But only if you understand the word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It's a light to take you out on a journey. It's a light to take you forward, not to take you back, not to make you paralyzed and stay where you are. Only if you're growing, only if you're spending time with the Lord, then my brothers and sisters, you're going to be on a journey. You're going to make progress. Most of us, if we are just sitting down on our hunches, sitting down on the throne of our life, waiting for people to come, nothing is going to happen. The word is a lamp unto my feet. Every step that I'm taking is taking me to fulfill the very purpose that God has created me for. But I must be faithful to take that step with the light that the word of God is giving me. And as I take that step every day, he's revealing his purpose to me through his word. And I'm reaching the finishing line in order to receive that crown from Jesus because he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. You have been faithful in small matters. You have been faithful to follow my word. You have been faithful to follow my instruction. You have been faithful to fulfill the purpose for which I created you. Come to the joy of everlasting life. And then one day when he returns, if you have got nothing to show, you say, Lord, you know what? I heard your word. I listened to your word every day on the Zoom class. But I sat on my chair. I never reached to anybody. I said, Lord, I am saved. I just kept all this thing to myself. I held it tight. Like that person who had, the, you know, was given the talent. One man went and invested in the, in the five. Other invested with three. And the one who had one, he said, Lord, you are a very difficult man. I just buried it and kept it inside. Here it is yours. He will say to you, go to that place where there is weeping and grinding of teeth. You have been a wasteful servant. You have not even got me interest out of it. You do not even forward my messages to anybody. You just kept it to yourself. You were just so much filled with yourself. He will throw you into that darkness. But until such time, he's being merciful towards us. He's being compassionate towards us. He's being patient with us so that we will begin to move. We will begin to operate through that power of the Holy Spirit that he has given us at our new birth. And you know, my brothers and sisters, I would, I would once again want to encourage each one of us, let this word 
Let this relationship that has begun by the Lord in us through the teachings of eternal life, let it stir us up so that not only we are going to take the word, you know, if you meet your fam family, your parents, your brothers and sisters, what are you going to talk to them? About the weather? About your children? About what has already happened? Or are you going to tell them about the good news of the gospel? And if you don't have anything to say, stop communicating. Go and meet somebody who will listen to you. Don't you get discouraged if one person says no. Go to the next, but start bearing fruit because time is short. We need to reach out with the gospel. We need to get those souls into the kingdom. We need to, you know, invest this time that is available for us so that we can all experience eternal life. We can experience the joy of salvation. Amen. Praise God, my brothers and sisters. Praise God. My sister Bernadine, can you do the closing prayer, please? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this, for this day, Lord. Lord, as you bring us unto you, Lord, as we listen to Brother Vincent's talk, Lord, Lord, as you manifest in us, Lord, that you put in us, Lord, that we practice each and every day of our lives, Lord, Father. Lord, as, as we practice the the teaching lord whatever as brother vincent has taught us lord that we will put into practice lord each and every day of our lives lord jesus i pray that amen that, that you are there with us lord that we we have studied this eternal life lord to have an intimacy with you lord Lord, I pray that you are with us, Lord. You will never leave us, not forsake us, Lord, Father. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Bernadette. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.